some of you have been asking, with all these e-bikes, what happens to them all and which do I actually normally ride? Well, I work with a local community center and donate a number of the things I will build there. My community is little upscale, but we are in the middle of a very blue color district. The community center is good at sort of keeping an eye on folks and making sure those in need get what they need. So two of my e-bikes have gone to students who just started at university. The phones usually get configured by volunteers for elderly residents so they can easily use them. And the 3D printers usually end up getting fixed up and used by one of the after school programs. No, I don't hoard it all. That would be wasteful. But the e-bike I've been using day to day for errands and such, it's a really cool one. This is the Milo trike, and it was sent to me by my friends at Scoots, an e-bike and e-scooter online store a few months ago. They're all the way in Vancouver, Canada. So if that's where you are and you're shopping around for an e-bike or a scooter, click the link below and you can talk to them about what's best for you. The Milo is very unusual. No paddles, just footrests. So make sure it's legal where you are. The Milo is what's known as a tilting tadpole tricycle. Tadpole because it has two wheels in the front and one in the back, giving it a tadpole shape and tilting because the front two wheels tilt, allowing better, more stable cornering. Of all the various ways you can configure a tricycle, this is one of the best. I like the trike configuration because it allows for very smooth, stable ride even when there is rough ground, loose sand, or gravel on the turns. Okay, let me give you a quick rundown on the specs. It's got an aluminum alloy frame. The max speed is 28 kilometers an hour and they say it can go around 45 kilometers on a single charge, but that's hard to test because I weigh less than most of you. It has hydraulic brakes, which I love because it's easier on my hands. It weighs 20 kilograms, can support a 120 kilogram wider and has a 350 watt motor. But the really huge feature and advantage it has over the other designs is this. Even though it's not my smallest or lightest e-bike, it's still my most portable because I can just push it around without carrying it. I can and have taken this all over Shenzhen. For now, it's definitely my daily driver. Let me take it out for a ride and show you why. So some of you have been asking, now what's with the e-bikes? Why are you so interested in them? Well, two reasons. Much like when I got into 3D printers years and years ago, I think that while e-bikes are a fairly simple kind of tech, they have the potential to have a significant effect on the world around us and how we live in it. 3D printers make us look at supply chains differently. When can you go without ordering an injection molded part all the way from China and instead just 3D print that new hinge for your washing machine right where you are? A few years ago, 3D printers were just toys. Now during the pandemic, a lot of people picked one up and started making all sorts of useful things. They became practical. Even if you don't own a 3D printer yourself, 
Knowing what they're capable of is essential if you want to see the big picture of a rapidly changing world. E-bikes are the same. Here in Shenzhen, I can get anything from an umbrella to a few toggle switches delivered in minutes to wherever I'm standing directly from an app. I can have any sort of trace people come do any sort of household repair here in an hour. And what drives all this is not AI or cloud computing or any of that. It's just people on e-bikes and a real infrastructure to support them. If they have to take cars, they couldn't find parking. If they have to walk or ride bicycles from the train or bus, they could never do enough business in a day to earn a profit and still charge a reasonable price. The gig economy and a lot of tech here is built on the foundation of ubiquitous e-bikes. 3D printers are simple machines, kind of just a hot glue gun on an XYZ gantry, so it's easy to underestimate their potential impact. E-bikes are the same way. It's just a bike with a motor. What's the big deal? Well, it turns out that little difference ends up having a lot of implications. So at least in China, e-bikes are starting to mean cities are built differently, services and goods are consumed differently. There's less reason for families to buy cars, so business within an easy e-bike ride thrive. During outbreaks, it means fewer people are commuting packed into trains and buses breathing each other's air. Even if you have no intention of ever getting one, and they are unsuitable for where you live, I think e-bikes like 3D printers or networking a few computers together at different universities so researchers can talk to each other is one of those kinds of simple, seemingly unimportant tech things with implications far broader than first missed the eye. So I'm keeping an eye on e-bikes and sharing what I learn, not just about the bikes themselves, but what they mean in a larger context with you. The other reason I like to cover e-bikes is there is not a lot of good video coming out of China these days of just, well, China. Every video shot here has an intention. It's shot to make some kind of point. It's already interesting and well done, but it's also intended to convince the viewer of something, good or bad. There is nothing even remotely neutral. I live and shoot most of my video on the outskirts of Shenzhen in Longgang district. It's very cool color. We are not rich, we're not poor. It's just normal working class families. It's just my life here. Maybe a little boring, but I'm not trying to say, aha, see, everything is fine. Or, aha, everything is terrible. I try to shoot without intention. Just. Let's go for a ride on this sweet e-bike and see how people someplace else live without judgment. And these reviews are a good way to share that with you. And if you want to get an e-bike, you'll get a lot of useful information. But no, these videos aren't about that. They are about staying aware of tech and seeing the world through someone else's eyes. So as you can see, the Milo is less of an e-bike and more a sort of scooter. 
There was no pedaling, no assist, just free power levels and a thumb throttle. So you are going to be getting less exercise. Personally, I don't like getting into the whole exercise e-bike discussion because you get a lot of people being really judgy about how other people get around. It's perfectly fine to get from point A to point B without exercising. No one cares when it's buses or cars. And when and how you exercise is no one's business but your own. But local laws may have something to say about the lack of pedals, so check before you order. I never have an issue with heels. But if you are over 100 kilograms and live someplace with very steep terrain, the 350 watt motor might struggle a bit and you would not have pedals to fall back on. You'd have to walk it up. Under 100 kilos should not be a problem though. I've had friends try it out. The Milo's ideal use case is really as something that's compact when not in use. You can take on mass transportation and move around while closed. There are bikes that are more compact you can put in your trunk, but nothing that has a small footprint and can be easily moved around while folded. What's important to understand is that if you have some mobility issue or injury, this won't self-balance like other kinds of tricycle. It balances like a bike, much more stable, smooth, and with much better traction on the terms. But you can't just sit with both feet on the pads at a stoplight. Once you unlock the front, it tilts freely. Lock it again, and it will stay upright on its own. But it's not steerable. The battery is not removable. Good because it's hard to steal, bad because you have to bring it inside or bring power core outside to charge it. This is less of an issue than with other e-bikes because it's light and compact so it does not take up much room in an apartment. Overall, the build quality and ease of use are both excellent. And as I said, right now this is my daily driver primarily because I can transition to mass transportation and it's an extremely stable, smooth ride that I enjoyed. It's certainly suitable for RVs, boats, all those kinds of things where you need to get around town for the day but don't have a lot of storage space. Now that I'm done with the review, I'll probably take this weird seat off and replace with a cargo rack or crate for Momo. If you're interested in the Milo, you can buy one from, from my friends at Scoots. Their link is in the description box. Great people. Tell them I say hi. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.